back to our Ask a Publishing Professional feature. Today we have Sam Alexander, who is our expert brand strategist here at Greenlink. So we are going to talk about all the questions that you submitted over the past week about brand strategy and platform. So let's get started. Why is having a strong platform crucial for thought leaders? Uh, that is a great first question. Um, the short answer to that is that your author platform or your platform as an author um, is absolutely essential because so much of what you'll do to try to bring people to your book is about getting them to ask questions about your material, your message. Um, you know, people are likely dealing with some sort of issue that they want to resolve um, that your book is going to help and getting them to ask that question is kind of the first step. Um, but your platform is all about answering that question, is if you succeed in getting somebody interested in your type of content or um, your solution to a problem, is they're gonna start looking for it, whether it's on Google, whether it's uh, you know, asking a friend, um, they might look to news sources, but when they go looking for that answer, what are they gonna find? Um, and your platform is basically the answer to that question, is you know, what, are, what answers are they gonna find when they go looking for who are you, and what are you all about? So I think, uh, you know, to answer that question again succinctly, it's you have to answer that question, and there are some important ways that you can go about doing that. Mm -hmm. So essentially, like, why are you credible? Yeah, it, it very much is about establishing credibility and um, explaining, you know, telling your story, um, you know, who are you and what can you help people with. So how can I build my following on social media to in turn help build my brand? Uh, another great question. Social media obviously is uh, an important piece of uh, a good author platform um, and a great way to engage with people. Um, and that is uh, the name of the game is engagement. Um, the first step is really, um, I think, understanding who, you're, who you are, what your message is, what value you're offering to people. Um, and then, to me, if you're talking about building on social media, it's all about bringing that message to life and actually delivering on it um, in small ways. You know, that might be a very tangible thing or might be kind of um, less specific or something that you can really deliver via social media. Um, but uh, the first step is, I think, delivering your message or your perspective um, through those channels, whether it's, you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, obviously, uh, or you know anything Snapchat. You could go to any platform, and it's all about um, sort of providing service to your audience um, and engaging with people. You know, you, this is designed to be a two-way uh, conversation. Um, so if you're only broadcasting, or if you're always just posting stuff and never listening to what people have to say or what people are saying around your topic, um, you're not sort of taking full advantage of it. Um, and the last you know, piece of that is uh, it can be tempting to do what you see other people doing that is successful um, and imitate that. Uh, that's a good way to think about it, but that might not be who you are. You know, there are lots of different ways that people succeed um, by using social media. And the last thing I would recommend an author do is to do something that is not them, um, that's not authentic. Uh, in order to just grow, um, because I don't think that's ultimately going to be in your best interest. So staying authentic to who you are, what your message is, and what you're trying to accomplish um, is important there as well. Yeah, I think that what we've seen here at Greenleaf is definitely establishing your audience too, yeah. and who you're, who directly you're speaking to, and who, and kind of you know gear your content towards that, and kind of build off that and A/B test and see what works for your audience. Mm -hmm. Having a website essential for a brand, a strong brand and platform? Uh, I think that the answer is yes. Um, you, that's not to say that there are not very strong author platforms that don't have a website, um, but uh, when it comes to discoverability, a website is super important just because uh, it's always going to uh, be in your control. Um, there's no, behold, you're not beholden to um, anybody or any social media's um, user agreements or their restrictions on how you talk or what you can do. Um, it's all up to you and you control it. Um, they can't 
change their terms and then delete your account, mm -hmm. uh, which happens um, very rarely, but uh, you know, it is a risk that, especially as you are bigger, um, becomes a much you know, bigger risk. Uh, and a website is something that you own and control. Um, it's also going to be the place that's the most flexible. Um, you can build it however you like to bring that story that you want to tell to your audience mm -hmm. to life um, and answer those questions that people might be asking. Yeah, discoverability and SEO is a huge thing yeah. think, as well, especially in the era that we live in right now. <laughs> so what are the key factors to having a strong brand and platform? Uh, we just talked about one of them. Um, I think having uh, an owned and fully in your control um, online real estate uh, in the form of a website of some sort, it doesn't have to be extravagant, uh, but some sort of uh, website that's gonna establish your credibility and um, you know, draw some amount of attention to you um, is kind of the first step. Um, actually, it's the second step. The first is uh, understanding really who you are and what you're offering to people, um, who your audience is. So having clarity on that is kind of step one. Um, step two is having uh, that home base and website, something that tells that story. Um, I think it's really important to think about what content you offer, um, particularly for authors and experts, outside of you know a book or um, a product that you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, give people little bits and pieces and tastes of what your solution is. Um, so some sort of some sort of content that's going to serve that audience. Mm -hmm. um, that can also, of course, be an incentive to uh, draw people in and bring people closer to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, some way to stay in touch with that audience. Um, ideally, not on social media. So basically, I'm talking about an email list. Um, if you aren't uh, collecting and getting people's consent to send them messages about your uh, about your content or about your products or services, etc., um, you know you are leaving a major piece of the puzzle out of your uh, equation. Um, and then the last is some plan, whether it's on social media, it could be speaking, it could be live events. Um, you know, some plan to engage with that audience uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know. They are currently, before you've come into their life, uh, solving that problem one way or another or searching for a solution. Um, so finding out where that is and finding a way to be active and involved in that community um, is essential, I think. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, huge or small. It can be what you're comfortable with or not, but it has to be something. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what number is considered a strong platform via social media followers? Uh, uh, this is uh, a place where I think that it's very easy to think that there's a magic bullet or some threshold that you are all of a sudden, um, you know, have a strong <laughs> platform, right? I mean, you know, some platforms have, mm -hmm. you know, Twitter's got the blue check and that's mm -hmm. one measure of credibility. Um, but I think uh, the strength of a platform is much more about how engaged they are. So, you know, if you told me that you had 100,000 followers and you post something on Instagram and you get seven likes, you know, that's not really a platform of 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, then there are people that have 400 followers and they get 50 likes every time they post something or 100 likes. Um, and I'd much rather, you know, be working with somebody that is got or uh, that has that engaged platform, that engaged audience. Um, you know, with that said, I think that there are some industry thresholds. Um, I think nano influencers, uh, which is a buzzword these days, um, is somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000 followers on the platform. Um, so that, if you're looking for a rough guide, uh, I think is one way to look at it, um, and sort of your uh, table stakes to get into that game. Um, but again, I think uh, that answer is gonna be very different depending on who you are, what your content is, and what your, your goals are. Um, you know, certainly if you're looking to go to a major publisher, that number is going to be much different than if you're trying to, you know, build a small business mm -hmm. um, in your local community. So it's definitely a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely different towards each person and each branding and whatever their message is, for sure. Yeah. So what branding advice can you give to an aspiring author with a small following? Where should I start? Um, that's... Such a great question, and it's tough to answer in a vacuum. Um, the 
short answer I would say that would work for the most people is to find where that audience is already spending time, whether they're looking for a solution or they are, um, you know, if, they, if you're a fiction author writing, um, sorry, where people are trying to discover new books to read, um, that is where I would start, is, is start where your audience already is. Um, find a way to uh, pay attention enough to learn how this system works, um, you know, what uh, levers there are to pull, um, and just engage in that ecosystem. Um, you know, for a fiction author, if that's the case, you know, I would say go to Goodreads because that's where people who are looking for new books are explaining what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, they're making recommendations to their friends. Um, and it's just this ecosystem that's built around the problem that you are solving as a novelist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that answer could be very different uh, for uh, a nonfiction author. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, that sort of ecosystem that you want to expose yourself to mm -hmm. um, and expose that ecosystem to you uh, is very different. Um, but that's the short answer, I guess, is, is find where your audience already is and try to start there. And start small. Don't, uh, don't try to do everything all at once and then burn out. Uh, it's much more about sort of growing slowly and organically. Um, from my perspective, that's the most sustainable and um, you know, reliable way to approach it, I think. I think especially consistency is key. And remembering that Rome was not built in a day. Yeah. So if you're going to start a brand on social media, you just need to be consistent and keep posting and find out what your audience likes, dislikes, and go from there. Yeah, and it's, it is like uh, just about anything on social media. When you compare, um, you are comparing apples to oranges mm -hmm. always, right? Yeah. Um, any, if, you're, if you're a novelist and you look at, uh, you know, a huge author's mm -hmm. platform. Um, they are 20 years, they might be 50 years ahead of where you are, um, and it's not helpful for you or constructive to compare yourself to that, um, except to say, you know, what's working for them and how can I, you know, build from that seed or work towards that goal. Um, but, you know, I like your room is not built in a day uh, analogy, it's 100% true and, um, Getting discouraged, it's easy to get discouraged. Uh, it is a long term um, investment to build a platform. Um, it's not something that happens um, overnight or quickly. Uh, so, you know, having that mindset from the outset is uh, going to give you a much better chance of succeeding in the long run. Mm -hmm. I use this example all the time. Uh, the author of The Alchemist, he mm -hmm. spent seven years posting every single day on his blog and posting it twi to Twitter, engaging with his audience to build his huge social media following that he has now. He started with, I think, 100 followers and built from there. So it definitely takes time, so don't get discouraged. Yeah. Awesome, okay. How can I build my platform offline? Hmm, um, that's a great question because when you think about platform, oftentimes you think about digital um, presence. Um, I would say it's kind of how you've always built a network. Um, so networking is the short answer, I think, to that. Um, you know, again, going to events or uh, you know places where your audience already is or spending time um, and meeting them. Uh, you know, understanding their problems, um, understanding what their goals are, uh, and you know, being focused on helping is, I think, you know, a great mindset to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are also ways that you can kind of concentrate attention on yourself, whether it's uh, participating in or putting on your own event. Um, you know, if you're a novelist, you know, your platform can be an individual fan that comes by um, to get a book signed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one more person that is, um, has a deeper connection with you and is more likely to recommend your book to somebody that's looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those little things that uh, an individual fan um, can do to help build, uh, you know, social proof for um, for your content are all very, very, very valuable. Um, and it is kind of a brick by uh, excuse me, brick by brick thing. Mm -hmm. um, and to, so that's how I would approach offline is either uh, through something like an event, a signing, speaking, um, or uh, just networking and kind of like engaging with that community. Yeah. I think people forget how essential networking is sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is hiring a publicist essential for an author's branding strategy? 
Uh, yes and no. Um, there is immense value in uh, in having somebody that is an expert in getting publicity and attention um, within traditional media, um, traditional or digital media, um, on your content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you think about social proof and credibility. You know, getting covered in a traditional media outlet or by a traditional media outlet is uh, can go an enormous way. You can make a lot of um, can make a lot of hay off of a single appearance or um, uh, story about you and your material. Um, so, in that sense, um, I would say if you're shooting for the moon, if you don't have a publicist, you're leaving um, you know a big piece of the puzzle out. But if you are working with a limited budget or um, you know you're choosing between um, one thing and another. You know, again, it comes down to a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more reliable to focus on building your own platform mm -hmm. than it is to say, I'm going to hire somebody, it doesn't matter how good they are, um, to basically build it through the traditional media. Mm -hmm. um, neither one of those things is complete without the other mm -hmm. um, if you're, again, like aiming really, really big. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, one of them is part of you and the other is. Um, a piece that is incredibly powerful, um, but you know people have found success with that. So um, it's tough to answer that uh, black and white definitively. Um, so I'm not going to answer it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think the way you answer it is perfect. Okay. So um, next question. It's more specific, but I have a moderate following on personal social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I want to start integrating my work more on social media.
to build something that's independent. Um, and then my reading over. So. Okay. So asking first, hey guys, should I be putting more of my fitness on my personal page? What do you think? Yeah. And seeing what your response is to that. Yeah. I like it. I mean, the, the odds are probably pretty good that your friends and network are going to want to support you um, one way or the other. Uh, you're almost certain not, like, you're, I'd almost guarantee you're not going to get consensus yes or no. Uh -huh. um, somebody will be annoyed that they're going to see your branded stuff versus your personal stuff. There's always that one person. Yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, right? That's perfectly uh, reasonable to say. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, ultimately, I think it boils down to what feels right for, you know, the person that's asking the question. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, asking the question and giving it a trial run and then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, seeking feedback expressly, asking, you know, I've been trying this, you know, it's about 10%, is it too much, is it too little, you guys want more, um, do you want me to just branch this off? That's the, you know, that's what's great about having a following to start reporting from. Yeah, I love that. All right, final question. Mm -hmm. How much time do I need to dedicate to building my following on social media? Uh, I would say if you're not spending six hours a day, then you will definitely, no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> this is a question that, uh, you know, depending on how far down this um, wormhole is rabbit hole that you go, mm -hmm. um, is a question that you're going to ask because, uh, you know, it can feel like um, there's a lot of vulnerability with sharing yourself on social media, sharing your message, and then, of course, from a tangible perspective, there's the time that it takes to do it, and the time that it takes to do it right. Um, it doesn't have to be a crazy investment of your time. Um, there's certainly some amount of it, uh, and I think planning is um, important, but once you get into a flow, I think you can do the stuff that is going to drive organic growth in 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a checklist on our website that basically says, um, you know, if you only have 15 minutes a day, what are the things that you can do on this platform or that platform? Um, that basically just gives you a list of tasks to try to accomplish. Uh, that makes it easy to contain that thing because you know all the social media platforms are designed to mm -hmm. suck you in and like take up your attention. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm uh, getting lost in that. So. Um, it gives you kind of parameters to try to do, and there are things that will reliably, um, you know, drive some amounts of engagement and growth over the long term. Mm -hmm. um, so the short answer is, if you've got 15 minutes, um, I can help you work towards growth. Awesome. And for those who kind of missed that, um, we do have a learning center mm -hmm. where we have expert branding articles written by our marketing and brand strategy team, like Sam that are all available on our website. And so I will link that to our Facebook page where I will post this video if you are unable to tune in. So thank you for joining us today, Sam, and make sure to look out on our social media for our next topic for Ask a Publishing Professional that we're gonna be doing in March. Bye. Thanks, Ellen. <laughs>